Surprise and good evening. I hope all of you are doing well this beautiful Sunday evening. You guys see in the title, it says the law of average and who's your five. I think this subject is um, a touchy subject. Um, I think it's mistaken a lot uh, when people are growing their life and growing their business and wanting to do new things. And what I mean by that, when I say who's your five, I mean, who are the five people that you associate with the most? Who are the five people you associate with the most? I remember as a young girl, um, a few questions my mom would ask me when I wanted to go somewhere or when I wanted to have company or things of that nature. She would say, do I know them? Who are their parents? Where do they live? And, you know, as a teenager, we're like, why, why does any of this matter? <laughs> why does any of this matter at all? And for many of you, your parents may have asked the same thing. And I wholeheartedly believe that none of it was coming from space of them needing to be a specific social status. I think more of the concern with our parents at that time was like, what are they into? Um, what do they do? You know, how do they think? How do they live? And the reason that they asked that question, I believe, they knew something that we didn't know. And some of us, even in our adult age now, haven't thought about. And that is the law of average. I was thinking about a client of mine earlier. I saw where she posted uh, about her daughter who is in college, but who has done an internship in another country. And, you know, as I watched the pictures and um, I can't remember where she is now, I mean, it's far away. And so she's maybe 19 or 20 and it just blesses my entire soul to see someone so young and courageous and adventurous at that stage in her life. And I remember her daughter um, sharing things with me when she was in high school about um, her friends and how she had such a diverse um, group of people that she was friends with from Asia and um, all different, different cultures and races that she was connected with on a regular basis. And so it doesn't surprise me, you know, at all. <clears throat> I'm attempting to put this thing in the comment that I wrote, if it will allow me. Um, but it doesn't surprise me at all that she has decided to do such adventurous things. And it blesses me because I understand that the exposure that she's getting um, now is going to impact the, the rest of her life. It's going to change how she sees the world. It's going to change the opportunities that she thinks are possible for her. It's going to change her mindset about so many things. I believe that our life experiences are shaped by the relationships that we have, the friends that we have, the conversations that we have. I believe that what you're doing right now in your life and your business, the way that you're thinking about your life and business has been impacted greatly by the people that you spend the most time with. And we're gonna talk about that on tonight because I find that many entrepreneurs who have a burning desire to grow and experience life on a different level um, and have big goals and dreams often are held back or find themselves stagnant or complacent because of their relationships. Now, it's, it's even hard for me to uh, give this message because I know that it's so often um, when you're growing and changing and evolving, when you begin to do things different, not everybody views you the same when you've made the decision to grow your business or your life. And a lot of that usually means that your circle of friends, your circle of influence, your co-centric circle of people, it normally changes. And so I was 
struggles tonight. This is going to be good. But I'm going to keep pushing through. Um, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do a quick introduction. This is not my normal broadcast. My normal broadcast time is on Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's called Build with Tanya. But I wanted to talk about this. I've been doing a series this month, uh, the month of November, things that we can say no to so that we can say yes to something else. Uh, normally, when you're setting out and making destiny decisions, for every yes you say, there is a no that you're also saying as well. And so I've just been highlighting some of the no's uh, that you can think about during the month of November. And many of them, guys, are no's that I've had to say. Um, I think I talked about um, no more complaining, no more settling, um, no more lukewarm efforts, all things that I've had to walk through and I've had to learn. And I thought November was the perfect month to just highlight and share some of those, those things with you all. And those are things that have really impacted my life. <clears throat> now, some of the no's that I've had to say were not always the easiest. Um, and as I began to grow and become aware of what I really wanted and what was possible for me, I also saw where I had been people pleasing. And mine came in the form of what we call dumb and down. So not necessarily um, talking about the big goals and dreams I had with the people who are closest around me, or you know, maybe just holding back some of the things that were really transpiring in my life because I was cut out of alignment right, with some of the people that I was sharing it with. And so many of you may find yourself in that space where you're growing and you don't necessarily have anyone in your immediate circle that you can really, really talk to about um, some of your dreams and goals. They may seem weird to the people who are around you. And I know that many of us say that we think our own thoughts, nobody is influencing us, and no one can tell us how to think or to feel. But even in our adult life, especially children, because they are so um, easily influenced, but I find you know, that adults are just as easily influenced as children are as well. And we may not think we are, right? You know, Because nobody tells me how to act, think, or do it. Doesn't matter what people are doing around me. I have my own mind. But I'm here to tell you that statistically and also just taking a look back on my own life, um, it's true. We are influenced by the people that we associate with the most. And so I'm going to propose some questions to you all this evening about the relationships that you have. You can answer them in the comments. That would be great for us to have a conversation. Um, you can answer them internally You can take a notepad, get your pen and paper out and take notes and then really take time to process what I'm saying um, later. However you want to do it, I would, again, I'd love for you to uh, communicate with me. Hey, Carolyn, um, while we're actually on the broadcast, um, let me do a quick introduction and I'm going to give you guys a chance to possibly share this out with someone on your timeline or um, just someone in your audience. If you are coach, teacher, trainer, business owner, you have staff, just share the broadcast out and give people something to think about as it relates to their relationships. I understand um, that relationships are a huge part of our growth and our success. And they're like vehicles that support us in getting to our next level or even limit us from getting to our next level. So we're going to talk about that on tonight. And we're basing it on the law of average. Now, we all know from school that we can add up a certain uh, amount of numbers and then there's an average, right, that we get out of, you know, maybe those five numbers. There's an average number that comes about and the law of average works with us inside our relationships as well. So we're going to talk about that, but I'm going to do this quick introduction. Number one, if this is your first time on a live broadcast with me before, um, say hello in the comments. Let me know what type of business you own, how you serve in the marketplace, how people get to experience your gifts. Secondly, if this is not your first time at Rodeo with me, um, put in the comments, hashtag renew. And we do that because most of what we're doing and most of the, um, the path that my clients go on with me is really a space of renewal. And we know that our lives are transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
And so your time with me, we, we are renewing our thoughts and, um, you know, our emotions back to a space of abundance. I believe that God intended for us to live in peace, joy, love, happiness, and abundance. And our journey is to renew our mind back to that space to get us thinking from um, a God space, a higher space. And so um, Renew Full Circle is also the name of my consulting business. And so put hashtag Renew in the comments if this is not your first time seeing me on either a live broadcast or on a video. And then thirdly, there's a button on the left hand side for those of you who are joining on Facebook, you can press it, something magic happens. It allows you to share out with someone else on your timeline who could use the message. And for those of you on Periscope, it's the way for you to share as well. But I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am the growth strategist. So growth is really important to me and those who connect with me grow in many measures um, because we get our whole life over here. We talk about abundance mindset, personal growth, and business building. Um, I strongly believe that outside of all of the business strategies and tactics that we learn, one of the determining factors of how our business and our life grows is based on our thinking. It's based on our mindset. So I teach heavily about mindset and our thoughts. Um, I highlight some limiting beliefs and uh, some scarcity thinking that keeps us from going to the next level. And sometimes, most often when we hear scarcity, we think money, but scarcity thinking is not only in our money, it can also be in our friendships, right? Um, and sometimes we hold on to relationships that are no longer serving us because it comes from scarcity thinking. So I teach abundance mindset, personal growth and business building. I am the founder of 3D Success Academy for Women in Business and Exceptional Leaders Mastermind. People work with me uh, either through my mastermind or my academy or through private one-to-one um, -one coaching. I'm able to take about 10 people a year outside of my coaching programs. I help women to build businesses that fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. And we start um, that path by getting really, really clear on what it is that we desire. We learn more about who we are and um, who our perfect people are, whether they are our clients or our friends and family, those people that are going to support us in fulfilling the vision that God has placed on the inside of us. And so tonight we're talking about the law of average. Um, as we get moving, I want you to think about the five people that you associate with the most. Now, oftentimes those people are family and friends. And so you can do the math for yourself. You can make your own list um, and just think about who are the, the five people that you associate with the most? And I want you to keep those people in mind at the forefront while we are um, talking on this evening about the law of average. Now, this is something that studies have shown the five people we spend the most time with. We normally have similar income ranges as them, maybe $20,000 difference up or down in income. Our morals are normally very similar to the people that we spend the most time with. Um, we normally adapt with interests and things of that nature. And so it's not always something we think about because um, those five people, as I said before, are oftentimes family and friends. It could be um, a significant other that you associate with the most, your father, your mother, a friend, a client, someone you work with, and even someone who has kind of been in your life by default and you've just kind of been holding on to, although you may have outgrown um, the people. Now, I said this is a touchy subject because oftentimes I find when people are growing, uh, the people who they normally spend the most time with may not always have the most positive thoughts about um, your growth. Uh, sometimes they say you sold out or you're not keeping it real. Um, you may have been accused of um, thinking you're better than someone else. And I just want you to really think, I mean, I want the people who may be saying that to think as well, because what is it that you're selling out to? What is it that, you know, a person who is growing um, and changing some of the things that they enjoy and they want, what are they selling out to? A better life, 
right? We, you know, we got to really think about this. You know, what is it that they're not keeping it real about? Because I think the realest that you can ever be is to be real and true to yourself. And many of you have this thing on the inside of you, um, this burning desire for something new, something fresh, something um, adventurous in your life. And whether we know it or not, the five people that we associate with the most have a huge impact on, um, yes, have a huge impact on what we do. Um, let's look at it as far as, you know, building a business. If you have not been exposed to someone who is doing what it is that you desire to do, even though you have that desire in your heart, you may not feel it's possible. Um, you may not feel that you're capable of making it happen. I was listening to a podcast earlier today, and there was a young lady who was a teacher, and she had created this program. And um, so she was still teaching. And then her program that she created was something that she was doing on the side. And one of the reasons why she was stalling and moving forward and possibly making her business um, a full-time opportunity was because she didn't know anyone that was doing that. And so even those of you who may work corporate America and maybe you have a side hustle that you are doing and um, you really want to go full-time in this, this new business venture that you started, but because no one around you is doing it, because everybody else is in corporate America working a nine to five, um, allow someone else to, you know, put a cap on their income, you may not feel that what it is that you desire is even possible. Do you guys, is this registering to you all? Because we are an average of the five people we spend the most time with. Now, many of you who are entrepreneurs and maybe you've been entrepreneurs for over 20 some years, you know how realistic it really is to be able to build a business that funds your life. I've been an entrepreneur for over 28 years. I wrote my own check for many years. And so working a job is, you know, to me, there are so many limitations for me personally when I think about, um, you know, having to punch a clock. And someone who's never been an entrepreneur would think that being self-employed was way too risky. And so oftentimes I'm with entrepreneurs, right? And so, you know, writing your own check is not unrealistic. So for those of you who are in a corporate America and you have a side hustle, um, have you ever thought about intentionally being in a community around people who are in full-time entrepreneurship, people who are making it happen, people who are um, meeting your six-figure income or exceeding it? Um, those who earn more than what even the degree that you've gone to school for has earned you. I think it's important to be in the environment of people that are doing things that you desire to do. And oftentimes our family and friends, you know, they don't own successful businesses. They, um, you know, and they, and this is the next thing to, you know, the five people that we're spending the most time with. Um, we have to remember that, they know you for who you have been with them. And so when you make new decisions to do things differently in your life, or you have new desires and you want to go on new adventures, or you want to do your life completely different, it kind of freaks them out, right? It's like, who's this person? Like, what are you talking about? And so I don't necessarily think that it's always intentional. They're just looking at you from the space of thinking, um, and familiarity that they've had with you, you know, all along. And so I want you guys to really consider the five people that you spend the most time with. And I want you to, once you think about who those five people are that you associate with the most, here's some questions I want you to answer. Um, what is their philosophy in life? Now, I don't know about you all, but I can think back to some friendships and relationships I had when I was younger. And there were definitely some situations that I was in and some things that I did that may have been a little uncomfortable to me, even if they were outside of the standards that I had. Eventually, you know, you're influenced by those things. Sometimes you're in the wrong place 
you know, at the wrong time because of who you are associated with, not necessarily because you're doing anything. And when you're wanting to, you know, grow your business, when you're wanting to make quantum leaps in your life and your business, your circle of influence, your friends are going to be super, super important. And I say this is a heavy subject because nobody wants to feel like, you know, they are, they say selling out or anything of that nature. But think about this. If you've been talking to um, these five people for quite some time about your goals and your dreams, and they've also seen you doing things progressively your life and your business has been growing and they still don't get it. It means they've chosen not to go in that direction. And many of you are being held up in your journey and making destiny decisions because of your associations. And somebody got to get out of the bucket. Somebody has to get out of the bucket in order to be able to help someone else. And so even if you need to, for a moment, think that you know, you're just creating a new environment. You're um, being intentional about getting in a community of progressive, you know, entrepreneurs or women or friends um, so that you can come back and help, so that you can reach back and help. If you need to tell yourself that, somebody's got to get out of the bucket. Y'all don't hear me. Somebody has to get out of the bucket. And our relationships are impacting our life more than we could ever ever imagine. Relationships matter to everything that you're doing. Um, so one of the questions I want you to ask is, what is their philosophy in life? What is their philosophy in life? You need to get out of that bucket. Listen, guys, it's, you know, okay, let me use myself as an example. So I've been divorced. I was married for 14 years and I've been divorced now for about three years. And I've noticed that I have conversations with more women who have been divorced than I ever had, right? Um, and it's because that's, you know, I'm associating myself in that manner now. And one of the things that I wanna be mindful of doing, one, I understand that I'm attracting many women in my brand who um, have gone through a divorce because I've been, um, you know, very public about my divorce. And so I understand that I'm attracting women, but I want to make sure that even in the fact that that is something that many of us have in common, that we're still talking about progressive things, that we're um, having conversations about healing and awareness and growth and not bitterness and anger. And, you know, we all have moments where we want to share our stories and we want to vent, but we don't want to we don't want that to be our story, right? We don't want every time someone talks to us, we're talking about all the bad stuff that happened to us before. I think it's important that we have a safe place to talk about things that didn't go well in our lives or that transpired, but those same communities, um, those same groups of individuals also need to be talking about solutions because if we're not careful, um, we will attract or stay connected to um, friendships and relationships that are only vent sessions, that are only complaining, that are not really talking about progressive things. If you are the person in your group that everyone is always asking for advice, but there's no one that you can really ask for advice. There's no one who has wisdom beyond your wisdom. Um, it's a clear sign that you need to enlarge your circle of influence that you need to be intentional about meeting new friends. Listen, the conversation is completely different when you are connected to women who are talking about growing their business and their life. Um, many of the conversations are very authentic about um, struggles that you know they've had, but it's also authentic about how they overcome and solutions. And if we're not careful, we'll get in the trap of only talking about the past. Everybody will be talking about how broke they are, how things aren't working, how awful the relationships were. But nobody's talking about solutions. Um, everybody will be talking about, you know, all the things they want to do, but nobody will be progressively moving forward um, and doing it. And so you want to make sure that 
you know, you're in a space where <clears throat> you can have conversations where you're not just talking about what you've gone through because you want, you know, a safe space to be able to explore and become aware, but you also want to have somewhere where you can have some solutions, right? Because we can all sit and complain, but is anybody in your community that can help you get to the next level, that can help you overcome whatever it is that you've gone through that has solutions to help you grow, expand, um, and change your life and your business. So one question when you're thinking about the five people you spend the most time with is, what is their philosophy in life when you're thinking about these people? Um, what are their lifestyle goals? Have you ever, you know, just sat and thought about the conversations that you're having all the time and nobody's talking about goals? Nobody's talking about doing anything better? They're only complaining about what's not going well. It's, it's completely different, right? When it's goal-centered, that is completely different from complaining about what isn't working. Um, do they align with what's most important to you? One of the things, I have a track called Design Your Destiny inside my 3D Success Academy. Uh, even in my Exceptional Leaders Mastermind, we focus on the direction that we want to head. We talk 10 to 20 years from where you are now and where you like to see your life and your business is super important. And one of the things that I'm asking when I'm helping people to get clear on creating a future bigger than their past is, what are your top five values? And if you haven't identified what you value the most, five things that you value the most, if it's financial freedom, if it's your faith, if it's family, um, if you haven't really identified those things and decided that everything that you connect with is going to support the things that you value, it's easy to have friendships, relationships, business partnerships. It's easy, easy to have those things that are out of alignment, right? Because if you haven't figured out what you want, you go anywhere with anybody and you do anything. When you have not decided what it is that you truly desire, we go anywhere with anybody and we do anything. And I mean, I can just think back to, you know, my younger years where, um, you know, I had boundaries and standards, but because I didn't really, I hadn't solidified what I wanted my life to look like, it was easier for me to allow people in who weren't in alignment with what I really desired. So one of the questions you want to ask is, do they align with what's most important to you? Have you ever been in a friendship or a relationship and maybe you have a um, strong liking for infidelity, but there are several people in your camp who, you know, are infidels? And so it's just out of alignment for you. Does that make sense? I know I use a hard example, um, but does that make sense, guys? Because all of it impacts it, it begins to um, like diminish how much you value whatever it is that you say you value. Does that make sense? It, it makes it um, impossible for you to really stand in your truth and be true to the things that you desire and that you value in life. The next thing is, what is their definition of success? Because everybody's definition of success is different, guys. It's different. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with you intentionally aligning with people whose definition of success is similar to yours. Because trust me when I tell you, everybody's definition of success is not the same. Some people's definition of success is to work a job for 30 years and, you know, still be paying on their home at 65 and, you know, finally pay it off. I mean, you know, that may be someone's definition And I'm okay, my internet kind of went off and then retiring, right? Whereas another person's definition is of success may be to earn a lot of money, become debt free, be a philanthropist, um, have a debt free home, pay their home off in five years, buy a home cash, um, you know, travel. What What is their definition of success? The five people that you spend the most time with, I promise you, it has an impact on how you, how you build your life and your business, right? You kind of start, it's easy to become stagnant in what you really desire when you're not aligned with people who have similar values and similar interests. 
Um, and then this next thing is really important because we can all have goals. Remember, I said, you know, what are their lifestyle goals? But are they striving to achieve those goals? Are the five people that you're spending the most time with striving to achieve um, those goals? Here's some more questions. Once you've gotten that down to ask about, you know, the five people that you're spending the most time with, do they uplift you? After you've had a conversation with them um, this week or the next time you converse with uh, either of the five people that you spend the most time with, I want you to think about how you feel when you finish speaking with them. Are you frustrated? Do you feel heavy? Do you feel burdened? Are you worried? Are you sad? Um, has the conversation been one that has um, empowered you or caused you to fear? How do you feel um, after speaking to those five people that you associate with the most? And I mean, you got to be real careful with feelings as well, because there are a lot of people who make you feel good because they're in entertaining you, right? Y'all have a good time, you party, all of that, right? Um, and then there are people that you feel amazing because they influenced you and they empowered you in some form or some fashion to do something that is your heart's desire. Maybe your time with them exposed you to something that you never had an opportunity to see prior to that or to hear about um, prior to that, it's crazy. A friend of mine and I were talking about um, tankless water heaters. I know it's crazy, but my mom is a um, licensed general contractor. And so I've been helping her do some things recently in her, her business. And there are some remodeling projects and things of that nature. And I was on the phone with one of my girlfriends who recently bought a home probably about five years ago. And prior to that, they lived in a, a huge um, home. We were talking about water heaters. I know. <laughs> and, um, you know, we were having a conversation about tankless water heaters. And so, I mean, just what type of conversations are, are you all having? Are they progressive? Are you learning things that you didn't know before? Are you empowered to do things different? Is there something that you want to research when you get off the phone or uh, when you leave a, a restaurant or a gathering with your friends, are you empowered to want to find out more about something new that, that you heard? I think those things are super important, guys, because if not, we stay in a box. A lot of um, limiting beliefs are, uh, they stem from the people that we associate with, with the most. Um, how they think money should be earned or whether or not everything should be given to us. Um, it makes a difference. It makes a huge, um, huge difference. So we said, uh, do they lift you? Do they uplift you? How do you feel after conversing with them? Um, I often find that women really desire more than they set out to do. But because they are afraid of what the five people they spend the most time with will think or feel or say, um, they never set out to do anything different. They're wondering, will they be criticized for changing and growing their life? Um, and sometimes you just have to say yes when they say that you've changed, right? Um, guys, we, we get one life you know, out here. I, I never want to feel like I live mine in a box. I never want to feel like I didn't give myself an opportunity to expand and grow and evolve. Um, I want to remain open to new ideas. I, I like to be in fresh environments where I learn things and I feel empowered and not, you know, just the same old, we having the same conversation, drinking, whatever the case may be. I don't drink, but um, I just can remember uh, some of the activities that, you know, I did before that were draining me. Like I knew that I could no longer take what was going on in my life at a certain point when I felt really, really odd <clears throat> in the room. Like everybody else looked like they were having a ball 
And I'd much rather have been home talking to, to progressive friends about how we're gonna take over the world. And I don't mean take over the world in a bad way, but what we're gonna do to impact the world with you know positivity or how we were gonna influence and change our lives. I'd much rather be in a space building and talking about things of that nature. And when I started going to environments and, and I'm, I'm sitting over in the corner and everybody else just looks like they're having an amazing time, I knew that I had to do some things differently. And I'm not gonna say that everyone who was friends with me before has accepted you know, the change that I've made. You know, there are many are extremely uncomfortable uh, with my growth. Uh, don't care to hear, you know, how I'm growing or the new things that I'm learning about. However, I had to stay true to myself. And you got to make some destiny decisions. You got to make some destiny decisions. I remember, um, I can't remember the first time I heard the statement, you're an average of the five people who you spend the most time with, but there was a guy that was asked the question, if he had a chance to put on a billboard, any quote or statement, what would he put? He said it would be, you're an average of the five people you associate with the most. That would be the one statement that he would leave for the world to see um, if he had an opportunity to put something on a billboard. And I've heard it so many times and I've had time to evaluate, you know, my own life, even in business, um, even what we do in our business is highly connected to the businesses that we've been exposed to. Right. So we may not think that, you know, earning six figures is um, simple. Right. We may think it's like super hard or that we always have to trade our time for dollars in order to make it happen. We may feel we have to do 10 businesses to, to make six figures, you know, mentality. And if that is how we've always seen it done, if we are associating with people who that is how they earn their revenue, then yes, that becomes our normalcy. That becomes what's real to us. And I think it's super important when we're um, wanting to go to new levels that we embrace uh, an open concept in our thinking and what we're willing to be exposed to. Now, I've been invited in some rooms that I wasn't always comfortable in, guys. I was nervous. You know, I'm wondering, like, what are they thinking? Do I fit, you know, in the room? But I understood that if I was always the smartest person in the room, I was limiting my growth. I'm quick to be in conversation and someone says something that I don't know. And I'll say, what is that? I'm not worrying about what they think about me. I want to know what it is. Give me the opportunity um, to grow. And so I never feel like I've learned too much. I've decided to be a lifelong learner. And I know that a huge part of that means that I have to be willing to enlarge my circle of influence as well. So I challenge you on this evening to think about the five people you spend the most time with. It is a law of average. You can add up the incomes, the thinking, um, how progressive the life is, and more than likely, you are an average. Your, your thoughts, what's transpiring in your life, what's manifesting is an average of the five people that you are associating with the most. And I heard this one thing as it relates to the people that you're associating with, um, and this one's hard now, but you take a look at their life and you say, is that how I want my life to be? Is that, would I trade places um, with that person? Not that we want anyone else's life, but you, you guys get what I mean by that. But our relationships are so impactful. They're so important. Um, business relationships, uh, our significant other, our friends, our family, all of that. And so it doesn't mean that we have to just get rid of everybody. But sometimes, guys, you got to make the decision. You have to say this person is negatively impacting my life. Their values are not in alignment with my values. They don't believe the same things that I believe and their choices are negatively impacting me. You got to like man up for sometimes you do have to say, 
I can no longer be in communication with this person because I feel this way every time I talk to them. My mind is on negative things. I'm, I'm starting to speak in lack and scarcity um, and fear, or um, I feel that you know the way this person lives their life is gonna impact me because I'm with them and they don't care about the same things I care about. Sometimes you have to make those hard decisions, but then there are other times where you simply have to be willing to be intentional about getting in a community uh, of people who are doing things that you desire to do, who are having the conversations about next level, whether it's investing and buying homes or, you know, what is it that you want your business to do for you? Do you want it to leave a legacy? Or are you just okay with people posting that on social media? Or do you want to be with people who are doing those things in real life? You got to make decisions, right? So the law of average is what we're talking about today. And many of us, you know, stay in unhealthy relationships. We stay in relationships that no longer serve who we are now or who we desire to become because of people pleasing, right? We're still trying to please people who are out of alignment with our destiny, who are out of alignment with the call on our life, the assignment on our lives. Um, there's scripture that talks about, um, was it Abraham that God said he needed to leave his, his father his, and his mother's land and go to the land that he had promised him, right? So he said he had to leave his family, right? Because there were customs and mindsets and conversations that they were having that would influence Abraham and he wouldn't be able to get to the promised land with those conversations, that thought process. And so are you in a space today where the five people that you are associated with the most are actually causing you to be complacent and stagnant on the things that you desire? Many of you won't invest on the level that you need to for your next level because the people around you are saying, girl, I wouldn't get nobody that much. No, they wouldn't. You're absolutely right because they don't have the same desires that you have. Remember one of the questions that I proposed to you all to ask was, do they align with what's most important to you? The five people you spend the most time with, for those of you who are looking to be in a great community of ambitious women who are leaders and wanting to grow their business, you're looking to create a six-figure model um, for your expertise, uh, you want to hire staff, you know you need to hire a team. However, right, you haven't adapted the mindset that will support you in making those decisions. If you are looking to create more time freedom in your life and your business, I invite you to join um, our mastermind. We're actually to apply. It's open for enrollment for 2021. Enrollment will not stay open once we have filled the interviews <clears throat> um, and the people who have applied are in alignment with the program. Um, we're going to close the, the applications, which will definitely be before 2021 gets in. But for those of you who are interested, you can apply at bit.ly slash mastermind. E. We talk a lot about mindset. We also you know, create your signature program or course from your intellectual property and then give you a six-figure business model for that thing that you build. And so maybe you have a business and you're looking to create another stream of revenue. I teach you how to do that inside of that course, but you're also connected to a community <clears throat> of ambitious women just like yourself who have similar goals and values. Um, as you, the support is absolutely amazing. Uh, you're enlightened, you're empowered. You're hearing new ideas. Uh, people are sharing their experiences as well as the coaching and teaching and training that you get um, from me. But that mastermind is Exceptional Leaders Mastermind. It is open for enrollment. In the meantime, I want you guys to think about the five people that you associate with the most. This is heavy, guys. This is not easy. I'm not saying that um, making new decisions about relationships is easy. It's normally really, really hard 
we form soul ties with people. We have the courage to do what's necessary for our next level. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. Um, but many people have the same opportunity to grow as you do. So all of the people who you may feel you're selling out on, they have the exact same opportunity that you have to grow. And maybe they choose not to, right? So are you obligated to remain connected in the same measure um, that you were before? Are you obligated to do that? That's my take on today. I want you guys to really, really put some thought into that. Evaluate your relationships, your partnerships, your staff, whoever you're connected to. Um, the five people that you associate with the most, are they supporting who you are now and who you desire to become? And when I say support, I don't mean are they giving you money or are they, you know, um, buying stuff in your business. I mean, who they are their character, their conversation, their nature, their desire, their desires, their goals, does it support the person that you are now or who you desire to become? That's my take on this evening. You guys have a super blessed, amazing evening. I will be back on, on Wednesday for Bill with Tanya at 9.30 p.m. every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's not too late. Hit that share button. Somebody else could use this message, relationships matter.